Eddie Fisher has uh, referred to himself as that guy who married all those actresses. But, but uh, in the 1950s, he became the nation's number one singing idol with uh, such songs as uh, Any Time, I'm Yours, and this one here. Lady of Spain, I adore you. Right from the night I first saw you. My heart has been yearning for you. What else could any heart do? And it just so happens that Eddie Fisher's on the line with us right now. Yeah. Eddie Fisher, how you doing? Yes, sir. I, I, I think I've said a few other things that, uh, other than the guy who uh, married all those actors. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's all right. No, I, what I usually say, I, uh, Eddie Fisher, who sings an awful lot about his father. That's true. <laughs> that's true. Yep. That's true. Uh, by the way, Happy New Year. Thank you very much. Thank you. Did you uh, do anything special yesterday? No. No? No, I didn't do anything special. Okay. The I observed uh, the, the uh, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, uh -huh. which is next week. And then uh, there's, uh, of course, yesterday was what, Rosh Hashanah? Yes. And uh, what what year is it? Do you know? I'm sorry? Do you know what year it is? In oh, the... and I think about 57... Uh, 70s. <laughs> 57, 70. You know, I always have trouble about this time of year. I'm, I continue to date my checks 57, 70, or 69, you know, something like that. Oh, well, that one went over like a... <laughs> <laughs> Are you familiar with the term lead balloon? Lead balloon? Lead balloon. At any rate, uh, the, the issue of, uh, of the people of Israel has concerned you for a long time, hasn't it? Well, uh, I'm, I'm not very religious, but I am very proud that I am a Jew, and uh, I've been to Israel three times, 1956, 1967, and 1970. I haven't been there in a long, long time, but uh, I, uh, I'm very proud, and uh, I'm very proud of uh, those people that are doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. Not everybody is, but... Uh, who could do everything right. Do you keep uh, keep up on uh, what's going on in the West Bank over there and that sort of thing? Well, I, I am a, an avid uh, follower of, uh, of news. I just, international, national, local, I, I that, that's one of my big things, watching or reading and reading books. I can... Uh all right, we can go back now to uh, when I first saw you on television. I'm trying to remember. You were wearing a uniform. I know that. Well, then it must have been around 1952. Mm -hmm. Was it on the Ed Sullivan show? It could have been. Yeah. Yeah, it could have been. And because uh, you were, in fact, they didn't even let you, uh, wait till you get out of the, uh, the Army. They uh, put you right on television. No, well, the re one reason I was able and allowed to do that was that... Uh, I, I worked for Army and Air Force recruiting mm -hmm. and uh, Ways and Wax, and so I was doing things. I had two shows that came out of Washington, D.C. I had done my basic training with the 1st Armored, Armored Division, Florida, Texas. Mm -hmm. They got me prepped to go to Washington yeah. or to Fort, Fort Myer. But uh, I uh, had the great fortune of being able to go all over the world. Uh, Truman, President Truman said, not only am I going to send you to Korea, I'm going to send you to... I thought, couldn't wait to hear what he had to say next. But I, I went to the Aleutians, uh, uh, all the area around there, and I uh, went all over Europe to our bases, and I, I had the best two years of my whole life were being in the Army. No, I was not a fighter. I was just an entertainer. Mm -hmm. I did no fighting at all. But I, I did like to go where the guys were because, uh, you know, even though it might have been hard, because being in an entertainer and in the army with, uh, in the service, with regular guys, it, it can be pretty tough. Mm -hmm. But uh, it worked out well, and uh, I almost, for one second, reconsidered uh, re-upping. <laughs> 
Oh, yeah? No, I didn't. <laughs> for, oh, for one second, okay. Right. Yeah, a lot of people do that for one second. Yes. But uh, I know I did. And the, uh, I guess that would have, 52, that would have been Korea. That was Korea, yeah. And you uh, got to go there? Yes. And uh, did some entertaining? Oh, yeah. I, I think we covered uh, from Pusan up to Seoul or wherever, as far up as we could go. And I did that same in, uh, not the same, it was different, because when I got off the plane in Saigon, I said, where's the front line? And they said, you're on it. Mm -hmm. So it was a, a whole different kind of thing. But uh, I felt I was doing what I should be doing. And the audience, is they're the best in the whole world. And uh, Oh, yeah. Th they're sort of, and I was sort of a And I when I saw my... My two daughters, Jolie and Trisha, and their mother, Connie Stevens, uh -huh. when I saw them on the, the aircraft carrier in the, in the Gulf, the Persian Gulf, I, was, I couldn't believe it. Uh -huh. But I was very <laughs> proud of them. Well, they did a good job, and so did you. And uh, I, uh, you talked about uh, singing about your father. The, um, uh, the one link that I had um, with Eddie Fisher, when I was five years old, and uh, this story is probably going to be of no interest to anybody except probably you and me but uh, when I was five years old my my father put me on uh, the stage at a, at a Union Hall banquet and uh, made me sing oh my papa really yeah you know what Ed I did a fine job too what <laughs> I have never heard anyone sing oh my papa beside you yeah me uh, yes <laughs> I always no one's no one records it no one sings it well the the first recording was made by Eddie Coward in London, uh -huh. who's a trumpet player, ah. and it was just a trumpet solo, and RCA called me in Chicago, and they said, they have a song that, they told me, Eddie Calvert, and it's called Oh My Bavar, and I was on the next plane back, rehearsed it uh -huh. that night, and the studio the next morning, and uh, we just worked on that one song, That's because everybody knew it was going to be a smash. It was, too. Listening to, uh, is this a re recording of it? Yes, it is. Uh huh. Yeah, I did it in Las Vegas. And the original, uh, you also sang with yourself on that, didn't you? No, on the original, I just uh, sang the, the song. Uh huh. Uh, but I've done it, I did it on the Colgate Common Day Hour with uh, Louis Armstrong. I did it on another show with Al Hurt. Uh, but they didn't sing it. <laughs> everybody was, I don't know if the, how the other uh, performers were doing, but everybody was had oh, my papa on their lips in those days. Made you, really? made so Well, it, you know, it really hit home with a lot of people because yeah. uh, knowing how people feel about their parents. Uh, I so, used to see so many people crying, and they would ask me if I was seeing it, seeing it because of my father, and when I answered I wasn't, they were very disappointed. <laughs> but, I mean, I felt it... Uh, I, I love songs with the kind of uh, yeah. drama like that. What was your relationship with your father? Well, it w there was very little relationship, except I, you know, I worked for him when I was about ten, uh, selling fruits and vegetables in the alley ways of Philadelphia. Uh huh. And uh, he once took me to a ball game, but mostly he, he was the. Uh, he was kind of a tyrant. But he had all these kids, seven kids, and a small house, and uh, we were on the leaf for a while, and I was embarrassed in school because the clothes I was wearing was recognized as being on relief. But he was a very proud man, and he tried, and I retired him at the age of 53, which probably was the biggest mistake I ever made. Even though he lived 20 years more, uh, uh, it was the wrong thing to do. This was an act of be be just becoming successful 
And I, the first thing I was going to do was retire my mother and father. And I did. But uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, suggest to retire anybody at 53 or 73. Or, uh, I think uh, you've got to go on. That's what I want to do. I want to go on and sing till I die. Are you in California right now? Right now, I'm in the heart of New York. Oh, New York City? Yep. Oh, okay. And uh, what what brings you to New York? Well, I've been living here for, uh, oh, I'd say nine years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I came here in 79. Got sick of Hollywood? Well, it, uh, it tends to make you lazy. And uh -huh. it's a whole different kind of life. Uh, I, I, I'm a lazy kind of guy, but uh, I can't afford to be. I don't want to be because it, it, uh, if you don't work mm -hmm. at what you do, you lose it. And it took me a long time, even though I've sung for many, many, I've been singing for 57 years. Uh, you have to keep doing it. And I have, I'm putting a new act together now, and I'm working with some wonderful men uh, who've got wonderful new things planned and uh, this is a real dramatic change and i i thrive on it i the new songs and uh, we're going to have everything new have you ever recorded a song that you have written no i i don't uh, <laughs> no i don't write you don't write well that's okay elvis didn't write either so, <laughs> so different. there's no big deal there um well that's good i want to talk more about uh what you're doing coming up um but first, now you wrote a book in 1983. About well, actually, um, I didn't write it. I uh, talked into a uh, tape machine and mm -hmm. uh, somebody working with me. But even through all of that, they fashioned the book, whatever. When I would finish a chapter and I would okay it, uh, I found out a long time after that they... They fashioned it the way they want to. Mm. I have 5,000 pages that were in a, a wall, a wall, vault. Yeah. And uh, I think they, they became mine after five years. 5,000 pages and all the tapes. And the first chapter, even, is very, very uh, dissimilar. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> so the book that came out is not the one you wanted to see come out? Well, the book lacks humor. Mm -hmm. The book lacks music. You know, bad or good, uh, that is what I do. Yeah. I didn't just marry actresses. Uh, I I did an awful lot of things, things that hurt me and things that helped me. And I'm very, very lucky to be alive. I'm very happy. I'm singing out there. I'm in the bedroom right now and the guys are out there, and I'm singing. And for me to be singing at 12.30, I started at 11. Uh -huh. Man, I really, I never thought I could sing. Well, I can't sing as well as I did in my prime, mm -hmm. but it, it sounds pretty darn good. I mean, <laughs> I, I like what I hear. Yeah. You and say you... wait to do it all. What do you mean you're lucky to be alive? Well, you know, I... I was a womanizer, I was a gambler, I was a drug addict, uh, and just to name a few things. I just <laughs> threw my money away, and uh, uh, jewels, jewelry, and, you know, I I was a big spender. And uh, Why was that? Did you get too famous too fast? It could be, yes. But, I mean, I, I was famous and for a long time, but nobody except when it was almost over, nobody said, Eddie, you shouldn't be doing that. Or, I guess they didn't dare. But there was a man named John Kelly in my book who really is responsible for making me aware, and I finally did something about it. John Kelly is in the hospital now recuperating from lung cancer. He had mouth cancer 25 years ago, mm -hmm. and he's a great, great man. He was the head of... Uh, the Deputy Commissioner of Drugs, uh, uh, what do you call it, Dangerous Drugs and Narcotics mm -hmm. for Hawaii and for California and uh, 
Nevada. And he sat you down and, and set you straight, right? Well, no, he, he came to the house. He used to come all the time. He said, how much you know about me, Jack? He said, I know more than you know. And he took me in front of a mirror. And he said, I give you six months. I said, what? He said, no, I give you three. And that put me on the road immediately to try to get out of it. it took a long time. And I always will be in debt to Jack. And uh, are you totally out of it? Do you think? Totally out of it. I am. A, I am a recuperating uh, addict mm -hmm. or alcoholic. You're recuperate. You are never free. You're always recovering. You're always till you die. That's a hard thing to swallow. But what I was doing, killing myself, was was worse. Are you? Ha do you feel happy about yourself now? I feel great. I really do. Because I'm singing, and I'm singing well. I know that the, the drugs, which I thought were making me stronger and better and smarter and quicker, were destroying me. And I am uh, I'm a good example for people who want to do this drug bit. Uh, and I was so, so lucky I should be a dead man because you can't win. Your daughter, no matter what anybody says. Your daughter Carrie went through that too, didn't she? Yes, she did. And she's written a book since, and I'm very, very proud of her. Everybody's writing books. Yes, sir. Yeah. I understand. I understand Debbie's, Debbie Reynolds is writing a book. Yes, I think it's out. Some of it's out. Yeah, some of it has leaked, I think. Uh, I think it came out in the... Um, in the magazine? Uh, ladies' magazine. Yeah. What did you think of it? What I you didn't read it. You didn't read any of it? No. Somebody told me uh, that I... She said I wasn't a good lover. Well, that, I guess that's all right. Oh, there are other things. And what does she know? <laughs> <laughs> what does she know? Well... The... Uh, Hello? Uh, the... Uh, now, that 5,000 pages you have locked up, are you there? Yes. Okay, that 5,000 pages you have locked up, are you going to take that and write a real book with it, or are you going to burn it? Well, the book that I've written is very real, but there are a lot of uh, missing, dangling uh, participles, things that were left out uh, that the publisher would be sued or I would be sued. <laughs> but the book is not entirely me. I've been offered to write another book, uh -huh. but I got, couldn't go through that again. I wouldn't want, it's too time consuming, and I just want to spend more time singing, and uh, I, I love observing uh, uh, political and social uh, the world. Mm -hmm. I'm a great watcher of what's going on in the world. So you're putting a new act together, and is it going on the road? Well, yes, as a matter of fact. Uh, I'm I'm going out to do a telethon on the 17th or the 18th out in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. It's a charity. I don't even know what it's for, but I was there, so I'm going out. And then I come back and I, uh, I'll be working. I'll work till 14th, 15th, 16th. I do three shows up in Syracuse. Mm -hmm. Then I go to San Francisco where I will uh, do one show. That's for Waif, Jane Russell's charity. And uh, I come back to the Waldorf on the 25th, Toronto uh, the uh, 10th and 14th. I hope up in the um, the uh, Royal York Ho Hotel. Uh, but I mean, I have so many. Well, what about New Orleans for crying out loud? I, I was I played New Orleans many many times. But I mean, on this new tour, if you ever get down here, we want you to come up and see us. All right, that's a, that's a deal. You see, also the wonderful thing happened. I did a charity for the. Uh, uh, at a hospital in Jerusalem. Uh huh. And I did it. I was going to do a show. Uh, it wound up we had to do two shows back to back. It was the first time they did that. And I am uh, a Cunard line boy. I'm going to be on their Christmas cruise from uh, New York down to the uh, all the islands of the Caribbean. Well, that's great. I'm going to make that trip then. Oh, yes, you should. <laughs> Eddie Fisher, thank you for talking with us. I know you got to get back to rehearsal. Uh, I appreciate it. I love talking to you, and uh, uh, I'll be looking for you, so look for me. I sure will. And you come to New Orleans, you look us up. Okay, Ed. Thank you. Eddie Fisher. Bye. Good luck to you.
Yo. 